The following program contains strong sexual content. Viewer discretion is advised. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, Sons of Gun Star arrested. William Hayden's in jail on child sex charges. His daughter's exclusive interview. Your sister confided that he had been molesting her since she was 11. Do you believe there are other victims? Shocking new accusations. Tell me what you say happened between him and you when you were 12. Did you tell anyone about this before now? I hadn't even told my husband. Plus. A Texas father accused in a revenge killing was acquitted of murder charges. This man that ran into you and killed your children, are you sorry he's dead? The shocking police video from the night of the accident. And the heartbreaking aftermath. You relive it over and over again. Do you, at any level, blame David for what happened? Yesterday, I sat down for an exclusive interview with David and Cindy Barajas. David was just acquitted of murdering the drunk driver who killed both of his sons in a horrific crash. After yesterday's show, our message boards just blew up. So many of you said, I wouldn't blame him if he did. I may have done the same thing myself. But of course, so many of you also acknowledged vigilante justice is not the way to go. Well, that was the debate that I'm sure the jury faced when they acquitted David Barajas. They were deliberating what happened on December 7th, 2012. It started out like any other day for the Barajas family. They had no idea it would end in a nightmare. I was driving. That's when the truck died out, 300 feet from the home. Eager to help their father, the couple's two young boys hopped out to push the car. I didn't ask them to get out. They kind of follow me. So daddy gets out, the boys get out, they want to help daddy. They wanted to prove how strong they were. But then, seemingly out of nowhere, an explosion shattered the night calm. A drunk driver slammed in to the rear of the truck. 12-year-old David Jr. was thrown into a ditch, and 11-year-old Caleb had lost a limb and was bleeding profusely. He was trying to stand up. And he didn't have both legs. So he fell back down. I remember seeing his leg under the vehicle. But I grabbed his leg and put it next to him. His shoe was still on his leg. By the time police arrived at the scene, the drunk driver who crashed into the boys was also dead. But not from the impact. Someone had shot him in the head. The car and the driver are still there? I think so. I'm pretty sure. I need to make sure that they didn't try to leave, okay? There's a gunshot. There's a gunshot. Investigators immediately suspected the deceased children's father, David, was the shooter. We turn now to a small town murder that has many asking, was it a revenge killing? Prosecutors say Banda was shot and killed by this man, David Barajas, who had just lost his two sons in a crash involving Banda. Did you approach his car and shoot him in the head? No, sir. No, sir. If you didn't shoot him in the head, who did? I couldn't tell you that, sir. David denies pulling the trigger, but I asked him if he was sorry the man who killed his sons was dead. If he, in fact, was driving that car and killed your children, are you sorry he's dead? Mm, you put me on the spot on that one, Dr. Phil. <laughs> That's a very tough question. Uh, I don't wish death on nobody. If he was, in fact, driving, he definitely destroyed us, he turned our life upside down. Um, we it, have it, to put ourselves in their shoes because... We all lost, you know, it was a loss. Daughter. But that's a, that's a very, very tough question. Um, I'm hurt, I'm destroyed. 
you know. The prosecutor said that she has no regrets about bringing the charges. We believe that Mr. Barajas committed this crime, and we also know that the jury did not believe that beyond a reasonable doubt. We respect that. How do you feel about that statement? It's upsetting. It's hurtful. I feel like they were trying to stick me since day one. You were arrested, and, you, well, you turned yourself in. Did you spend some time in jail? Yes, sir. How long? I spent five days. How did you feel about that? <sighs> Destroyed. I just lost my two sons that love with all my heart. And here I am, chance of losing, you know, the rest of my family of me being behind bars. For life. For life. How was it for you at home with him in jail? You already lose half your life and don't know whether it's a dream or if it's real. Having to explain it to your daughter. The kids at school bringing her newspapers to show her that her daddy was arrested and what he was being accused of. Mm -hmm. Were you shocked that you were arrested? Did you see this coming? I was shocked about it. We went in to give DNA tests on, on a Tuesday with nothing to hide, thinking no harm could come out of it, and then Friday get the phone call that they want you to turn yourself in, that they're charging you with murder. Do you think that was because of the DNA? Because I know at one point they said that DNA consistent with you was found inside the drunk driver's car, and you say that you never got inside that car and that you never made contact. Correct. So how did that blood get in there? I do not recall, sir. There was testimony on how it got in there by the teenage boy. He said when he came to the scene, someone that fit the description of David looked inside the vehicle and it had one blood drop on the inside of the armrest. But the window was up. There was a gap in the door about this far. From the impact That's itself. correct. How did they get this through the grand jury? Well, I believe that at that time that the grand jury had limited information. The lead investigator in the case, he testified that on the night that this happened, that he considered David a suspect and no one else. He believed he had motive, opportunity, said he was obviously angry at what happened, and then they went forward with that. But, you know, you got to have motive, opportunity, and means. He certainly had motive. No one can deny that. But he, he didn't have the means. There was no gun. There was no gunshot residue. But nonetheless, he, he got charged. And their theory was that he left the scene. Yeah, that's what their theory was, and they maintained it throughout the trial, even in closing arguments. Did you ever leave the scene? No, sir. I believe that this wreck would have happened a mile down the road that they would have never charged Mr. Barajas. But it was because he was so close to the house. It was so close to the house, really about 100 yards from the house. When this went to the jury, how long did they deliberate? Well, it's our understanding that they deliberated three hours, but we've had some uh, recent information that the jurors in the case, uh, they made a decision within two or three minutes after going back in the jury room to deliberate. If this was a crime of passion, a crime of rage. Doesn't common sense tell you that that person would empty that gun into this person and not deliver a headshot and walk away? Yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. So they were asking the jury to believe that this man left his mortally injured sons unattended and left the scene to empower vengeance. You got it. Did anybody see this man with a gun? 50 plus people were at that scene and not one person saw David with a gun, not one. Did he get indicted just because of the common sense approach that a lot of people would say, hell, I might have shot him if it had been me? They indicted Mr. Barajas before they got one piece of DNA back. Why were they rushing to do this? Why, why, why not wait and build a case? Yeah, I just believe that they thought that they had their guy that night. These police officers testified that during trial, there was unknown male DNA underneath the fingers of the dead guy. Not only that, though, 
in the driver's seat was found someone else's cell phone. In the passenger seat was Jose Banda, his cell phone, and his shoes. All of the blood with regards to the gunshot wound to the head was concentrated in the passenger side airbag. Who shot Mr. Banda? Coming up. You sit there and wonder, you know, why didn't God take us instead? Do you at any level, at any time, blame David for what happened? Who shot Mr. Banda? Somebody definitely shot Mr. Banda, but it wasn't David Barajas. You know, the thing that bothers me, all of a sudden now you're fighting for your life and freedom. Your home is disrupted a second time now. You lose two boys now. He's under indictment. Did this interfere with your ability to grieve your sons? I felt like committing suicide. I couldn't really face it that my two sons died over somebody's actions of being drunk and careless, and here I am still alive. It hurts me. Do you blame yourself for being on that country road that night? I don't think that there's a parent that doesn't sit there and blame themselves. What ifs, all the what ifs and could haves and should haves and why didn't we? At times I do. You sit there and wonder, you know, why didn't God take us instead? Do you at any level, at any time, blame David for what happened? I blame both of us. Do you blame Cindy at all? I blame myself. I, 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 don't, I don't blame her. Those thoughts did go through my head from time to time. Why did she let him get out? Or, But at the same time, they wanted to do what they wanted to do. Do you blame yourself for letting your daughter out and see what she saw? That I wasn't fast enough to get there before she did. You relive it over and over again. And if I have to, I can only imagine what goes through her little mind. She's one of those that just, you try to talk to her about it, and she says, I don't want to talk about it. She sees me crying, and she'll come up to me and wipe the tears from my face and tell me everything's going to be OK. We're going to see them again one day. Do either of you hide your emotions from her? I do. It's harder for me to hold it in than it is for him. He holds everything back. He goes to the cemetery by himself sometimes just so that he can have that time alone. I wish that he'd express himself a little bit more, but I see the pain in his eyes. And I know he hurts. I let him down. I did let us all down. Not just my wife and my kids, but I feel like my, my mother, my father, my sons are gone and I miss them and I love them and I want them and, you know, so much I want to say to them. It doesn't seem real, even though it's closer to the two years and when it happened, it felt like the world was coming to an end. I would like for you to walk me through the dash cam video because I think it speaks volumes. There are moments in that police video that were just too difficult for David and Cindy to relive. We wanted to be sensitive to that, so we asked that they step out of the room while I talk to their attorney. Just yeah, him this, pulling up on the scene, right, right? This is the very first officer that arrived at the scene. This okay. is the first responder. Okay. And that's the impact vehicle there. You can hear Cindy screaming in the background. Uh, 
possibly going to be dealing As you see, the, the police officers are providing no assistance to the children, none. Well, this was actually, this this video was the second responder. Okay, this is the second responder. It, it, it was. And David's over there working right. on Caleb trying to save his life. Okay, that's him right there to the left. That's correct. Okay. When I first saw it, Dr. Phil, I was disgusted by it. I was really put off by it. And then I thought, these guys aren't helping these people. They're not consoling the mother, the father. They're not helping the children. They're just casually walking around the site with a flashlight. What is the chance that Mr. Banda was not driving that car and, in fact, was dead by the time that car arrived on the scene? I mean, that was my theory. I said, hey, I believe this guy may have been dead before the teenage boys got there because they have the passenger door open with Banda partially hanging out, and then they have the back passenger door open where it looks like someone fled out of that door. Plus the whole concept of someone else's cell phone being in the driver's seat. Coming up. I'd be lying if I said things are perfect between us. It's been really tough. It, it's definitely put a lot of stress and strain on the relationship. We now return to Dr. Phil's exclusive interview with David and Cindy Barajas. How are you two doing as a couple you know it's hard so we try to talk about the memories that we do have of the boys and i'd be lying if i said you know things are perfect between us it's been really tough it's, it's definitely put a lot of stress and strain on the relationship but we're here we're strong and we're determined to to keep going well that brings us to a point about what do you do now what about your daughter and i, I do want to talk about where you go from here and and, and try to help with that as much as possible. We're going to offer some professional help to y'all back home with your family. Just as our gift to y'all to help you get through this. As I can tell you that when this type of thing happens, the risk of that marriage failing across time goes up dramatically. And I'll tell you what worries me more than anything. Children have a unique ability to figure out why everything is their fault. They, they just do it. And wouldn't you hate to find out years from now that your daughter had suffered for years thinking, I was the one that wanted to go to the restaurant. And that's why I think it might be worthwhile to get some help and take a look at this. So uh, i just like to talk to her for a few minutes, if that's OK. It's fine. Janessa, I'm Dr. Phil. Hi, Dr. Phil. How are you? Good. Well, good. I just um, wanted to meet you and say hello and talk to you. Do you know why you all came out here to talk to me? About the accident. Mm-hmm. About the accident. I'm so sorry that that happened. I, I really am, and I'm so sorry that um, you lost your brothers do you think about them much yes yeah what do you think what do you think about like what they're doing right now like if they're just like sleeping or they're just relaxing or... how do you think your mom and dad are doing about all of this they try not to cry and they try to be strong but like sometimes they just break like break and start crying mm -hmm. and how do you feel when they break and start crying like i feel sad i go up to like i hug them tell them everything's gonna be okay and that they're in a better place now do you ever cry about it um sometimes like when i'm feeling lonely well you know sometimes um kids have to tell parents how to feel for you to go and tell your parents you know it's okay and it's going to be all right really helps them a lot. Sometimes when you maybe you see your mom crying, for example, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because if you like keep it inside, you can just kind of get all tense. And if you let it go and cry, then that relieves the pressure. You know, it's like taking a big deep breath, like, 
You know how that feels sometimes. It relaxes you. Mm -hmm. I really hope that you guys will celebrate them like at Christmas. You know, I'd make sure that I had their pictures around. I would make sure that you talk about them. The worst thing you can do is not talk about it. And if there are times that you feel like you need to talk, you go, oh, I hate to bring it up because my mom's having a good day. I'd hate for you to feel that way because the best thing you can do is talk. And when your mom hears you talking, when your dad hears you talking, then they know you're okay. You just need to think about the fact that you had two brothers that loved you and now you got two angels watching over you. So it's different, but it's still them. With this acquittal in the eyes of the law, it was not David Barajas that fired that gun that killed Jose Banda Jr. So who did? And was Jose behind the wheel when his car slammed in to Caleb and David Jr.? Well, we may never know the answers. What we do know is that David and Cindy Barajas have lived through a nightmare that no parent should ever have to experience. The love and faith they share will surely help guide them through these dark times. I'd like to thank them and their attorney, Sam Kemick, for joining us. Coming up, another family in the headlines, Sons of Guns reality star William Hayden is accused of the unthinkable, sexually abusing his own 12-year-old child. What really went on when the cameras were off? Our exclusive interview with his daughter is next. You won't believe why she says she's no longer defending her dad. New information about the arrest of this reality TV star, William Hayden's in jail on child sex charges. What did this personal assistant allegedly see? The report says that she saw my father leaned over my sister, kissing her passionately, undressed. William Hayden scored reality TV fame with his gun-toting annex on the Discovery Channel show, Sons of Guns. But fans were stunned when the star was arrested on charges of child molestation and the aggravated rape of a minor. New information about the arrest of this reality TV star from Baton Rouge. The Sons of Guns boss was locked up over the weekend. Tonight, William Hayden's in jail on child sex charges. Second time since August 9th when he was charged with child molestation. Both cases involved the same 12-year-old girl. The show was shot at his gun shop, Red Jacket Firearms. Now the famous gun shop he owned is putting distance between itself and the boss. Rachel Hayden said her husband didn't do it. I do believe that she would have told me. Documents obtained by WBRZ News 2 paint a different picture, saying Hayden started having sex with the girl a year and a half ago when she was 11. She says she was raped almost daily. William Hayden told me he's innocent of all the charges against him, and the woman making the allegations against him drummed up charges because she was angry with him. Most recently, this photo taken when he was booked into jail in Livingston Parish. It comes as new allegations came to light today. Just this past week, authorities charged Hayden with an additional count of forcible rape after another victim came forward claiming Hayden raped her when she was 12. Today, William's daughter, Stephanie Hayden Ford, who also co-starred with her father on Sons of Guns, is speaking out for the very first time in an exclusive interview. Describe the day that your father was arrested for the first time. Tell me how that day went down. Where were you? What happened? I was actually uh, taking my kids to the movies, and I got a phone call right before we walked into the theater. I ignored it. A text message followed that, and it said, Dear God, please call me. Who was calling and texting you? That was my father. I called him, you know, immediately. I'm, what are you talking about? You know, and he's like, well, the police came by, and I need you. I need you here. Please. And he just, he was so frantic. And I, just, I was like, Dad, just, just calm down. I'll be there. When I walked into the house, he was pacing. And I just, I was like, what happened? And he says, I, I don't know. And he told me some police officers showed up. Uh, and started asking a bunch of questions and wanted to take my sister uh, downtown to 
interview her. I don't want to use her name because she's a minor, so I'll refer to her as your little sister. Yeah. He said they took her. Did they give him any explanation? As we got to talking, it came out that it was sexual abuse. And that took me back at that point. I just wanted to see my sister. As soon as a car pulled in the driveway, I bolted to the door. And when I saw her, she seemed fine. Did he say how they had gotten alerted to any alleged misconduct? He immediately started to blame an ex-employee of ours. But this woman wasn't just a regular employee. She was she's a family friend, a very dear friend of ours that we love very much. And it that upset me. So at that point, you're believing your father and your little sister? I believed my sister. I had to. I, I just always had a little thing in the back of my head that told me to, you know, to be leery. And he says, I don't know why, but I think this ex-employee is trying to cause trouble. It kind of came out through the police officers asking questions that she had let herself in and things like that. She was a personal assistant of ours. She had full access to the home. Right. It wasn't unusual. What did this personal assistant allegedly see when she let herself in the house? The report says that she saw my father leaned over my sister who was laying on the couch kissing her passionately, undressed. Who was undressed? Uh, my father was. Was your little sister dressed or undressed? She was dressed. It seemed to be as if it would have been right at the very start of something. Since she reported this, she's gone into hiding. Why would she go into hiding? Because when all of this occurred, uh, there was multiple death threats that were put out on her and anyone else involved that decided to speak out against him. Mm -hmm. Death threats by who? By him. So you say he threatened to, to kill, kill her. her. Yeah, and this is all alleged because it hasn't been proven. At some point, you say your sister came out with a very different story, one that detailed some very inappropriate behavior. Yes. This was said to who? Her grandfather. He started hearing crying, bawling, screaming, and she came out just falling. He has baby, baby, what, what's going on? And she she finally looked at him and said, you know, I, I've got to talk to you, I've got to tell you. You know, he, he did these things to me and he took her immediately to the hospital because her biggest fear was that no one's gonna believe me, everyone supports him. Unfortunately, one of the biggest things in this has been that we are in the public eye. So she's seeing all of these things online that people are supporting this man and that everybody's buying the story about the disgruntled employee just trying to take him down. And she really felt like the world was against her. Now, according to reports, she said that he took her virginity in 2013 and she claims that she was raped by him almost daily, but did not report it because he had threatened her physically. And I now believe that. She's told me a lot since then, and there's been a lot that's come to light. A lot of my memories from being a kid have come back. At that point, I knew I was against him. And the entire time during this whole thing, he had been saying, and he's always said, if you're not with me, you're against me, and I'll take down the world if it's against me. Coming up. You've done statements, you've gone on television, you said not true, but you now come forward to say that's actually not true. How old were you when you say he was inappropriate with you? Now we turn to the Sons of Guns reality show scandal. The Daughter Speaks Out. 
It was on the 9th that you gave a statement that said there was never any impropriety in our home. He was and is a good father. Yeah, he right? asked me to make that statement. And you did? Yes. You spoke to a news station in Baton Rouge. That's right, I did. Yeah, um, I have the clip. Let's look, yes. let's look at it. It's taken a toll on her. And honestly, that's what I'm the most upset about. Who does that to somebody? Hayden's family members say someone they used to have a strong relationship with is spreading lies because of their notoriety. Honestly, man, it's turned into more of a media nightmare and letting people know that it's just not true. I mean, you're in the spotlight and people know that they can put you through this, so they will. And that's how I felt at the time. I really did. Well, he was arrested that day again on the 26th. Yes, he is in jail. You've done statements, you've posted things, you've gone on television, you said not true, never any impropriety, nothing's wrong. But y you now come forward to say that's actually not true, even about you. Your sister confided in a grandfather that her father had been raping and molesting her since age 11. How old were you when you say he was inappropriate with you? I was 12, same age. Same age. Mm -hmm. So this would have been about 20 years ago. Yeah. And I know it's painful to talk about. Tell me what happened between him and you when you were 12. He came into the room and he was really drunk and he sat down on the bed. I asked him, I was like, you okay, daddy? And he was, yeah, daddy just doesn't feel very good. Why don't you come give me some love? So I went over there and I gave him a hug, you know, and he snuggled down into my chest. He had me sit on his lap, you know, and I was, you know, was wrapped my arms around him and, you know, just, hugged him and then he started to kiss at my neck and things like that. At that point I realized that he was holding me pretty tightly, you know, and that he had me kind of in a, a spot and it led to him pinching at my chest and he pulled my shirt down and things like that and he had his hand around my waist really tight. I just kept trying to shake shake him off, you know, and he started to talk about, you know, the, the shape of my breast and things like that. And um, he continued to, to proceed to kiss on my chest. And once that happened, I jumped back and got off of him. For some reason, he just left. And he never touched me again like that. Did you ever tell anyone about this before now? No, it wasn't until my sister told me the truth about or what she said happened. And I hadn't even told my husband. Knowing that this had happened to you at exactly the same age that he's accused of doing this with your sister, how did every warning bell in your brain not just start ringing big time? It did a little, but she was so convincing. All she kept saying was that she just wanted to go back home to her dad. And she loved him and she missed him and that, you know, she just wanted it to be over. Me, after it happened to me, I was immediately depressed. I didn't want to go around him. I started carrying knives. So you're saying you know this happened to you, but she's not acting or reacting the way you did, so maybe it isn't true. She just kept persisting that it wasn't true. You didn't speak out when you were 12. You didn't tell your mother, you didn't tell his wife, didn't tell the police, didn't tell anybody. So why are you telling this story now? Why here, why now? Because I know that for one, my sister needs me. She needs someone that can speak for her, that can be on her side. Do you feel like you let your little sister down? If you had come forward then, maybe this wouldn't have happened to her? Yeah. Every day since, that's all I can think about. Do you believe that there are other victims? We now return to the Sons of Guns reality show scandal. The daughter speaks out. Do you believe 
that there are other victims? I do. Uh, since all of this has come out, one in particular as another family member of ours, I had to ask if, if he had ever done it to her and she got, she got extremely quiet. And she broke down crying. And she told me that it was, it was true that it had happened to her twice in two different places at the age of 12. She says it happened to her by him at the same age. And she told you this when? Uh, this maybe four days ago, four or five days ago. Do you think there are others? And if so, how many? One of my friends told me that he grabbed her by the throat and threw her against the wall and shoved his tongue down her throat. So these people are starting to come forward now. Yeah. You've added up, you know, five or six people here, in, including yourself. Are these people all going to come forward now? Yes. Are they going to file statements and reports? Most of them. So are you afraid of your father now? I'm very afraid of him now. You're saying this is it, it's the truth, and you, and you stand by that. Yes. And if this is proven, he's likely to go to jail for a very long period of time. Yes. And you think that's what should happen? Yes. I think that he has spent his life manipulating people and hurting people. If you are called on to testify in trial, will you do so? Of course. You've sat on this for 20 years, and now you're telling this for the first time. How do you feel telling it? Dirty. The same way I felt I would when I was 12 years old. I'm scared. He controlled my entire world. Everything. Stephanie's husband, Chris Ford, also stars on the reality show Sons of Guns. He says he had no idea his wife was allegedly abused until after her father was behind bars, accused of hurting his youngest daughter. This is the first time she's ever said anything against her father. And the manipulation that he has apparently forced upon her over her lifetime. Uh, Stephanie has told me in minute ways what she's been through. I know that just the small things that I do know have bothered me tremendously. I don't, I don't understand the monster that it takes to want to rape your child. I don't understand the thoughts that go through your head to force that upon anybody, much less your own flesh and blood or a child that's defenseless. How sick, how incredibly vile and disgusting and shameful of an action that is. You're coming forward now telling your memories of what happened. There are a lot of women and young women watching this right now that will be inspired by your courage. You know, when you come forward, you find out, wow, I'm not alone. Yeah. It took a lot of courage to come here today and talk about this, and I'm glad you did. Thank you. Stephanie having the chance to actually tell her story to the world, this is something that has been hidden inside her for over 25 years, it was definitely freeing. There were things today that I'd never heard before. So to hear a bigger, more precise story than I really wanted to was tough. Immediately after our interview, she nearly fainted and collapsed into the arms of her husband. Stephanie basically had a panic attack. This is the first time she was ever allowed to publicly speak out against her father. It hit her hard. Having Dr. Phil give us the opportunity to come by and for Stephanie to be able to finally open up about this is a blessing. Now we reached out to William Hayden's attorney and did not hear back by our broadcast deadline. Again, I'd like to thank all of my guests today for having the strength to share their stories. If you feel that you are in a similar situation, there is help available. Please go to drphil.com, click on the links there that offer you help. I want to leave you with a tribute to David Jr. and Caleb Barajas. 
I want you to see these two wonderful boys the way their parents remember them. Thanks for watching. My son Caleb was outgoing, very smart. He was the student council, football player. Wore daddy's suit and tie. He was determined to be an attorney. He said, Dad, I, I want to be the attorney of the family. David liked music, and we brought him to the Hollywood and Beverly Hills bit. He just thought to himself, Mom, either music or producer or something. And I told him, I just want you to live out your dreams.